Renee and I recently read a book called Could It Be This Simple, where they quote American researcher B.S. Centerwall, who conducted an elaborate study to evaluate violence in society before and after the introduction of television. The Journal of the American Medical Association published the findings of Centerwall's research on the effects of television programming on violence in society. To reveal a clear-cut indicator of violence, he focused on homicide rates in the United States and to ward off objections that any increase in the murder rate might result from easy access to guns, he compared the U.S. homicide rates to those in Canada because we here in Canada are a very similar westernized country, but we have very strict gun control laws. Relatively few Canadians own a gun. Finally, he compared the information from the United States and Canada with statistics from South Africa, which did not allow television until the 1970s. And as an added precaution, he counted only white-on-white -white murder in South Africa to rule out any chance of the apartheid policies of racism affecting the outcome. And what he discovered is startling. After the introduction of TV, homicide rates in the U.S. increased, get this, 93% from 1945 to 1974. During the same period, homicide rates in Canada increased 92%. Almost the same, but in South Africa, where TV did not appear until the 1970s, the homicide rates decreased by 7% from 1945 to 1974. Astoundingly, after the introduction of television into South Africa in 1975, the homicide rates increased 130%. In April 2004, the professional journal Pediatrics published astounding research that revealed television watching by children increases their risk of developing attention deficit disorder. The amount of time a child watches television changes their brain. This evidence in conjunction with other research with similar findings has led the American Academy of Pediatricians to recommend no television of any kind for a child under two years of age and strict limitations on older children. Clearly, what we watch, admire, and believe has a significant impact on who we become. This is why King David vowed, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. He knew that what he looked at would affect his eternal salvation because by beholding, we become changed. Instead, King David desired to turn his gaze elsewhere, and we encourage you to do the same. He penned these words, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple.